<laughs> hey, what's going on, everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and uh, here I am with my kind of dusty PS2. This thing's been sitting on the ground for about a month or two here. It's just been uh, behind me uh, in my office. And originally, I want to play some games on this. Now, I had this thing modified a bit. Uh, it's not hard modded, but in case you don't know with the PS2, if you got one of these things, a uh, just standard memory card, you can use some magic and install something called Free McBoot on the memory card. Uh, that essentially allows you to play homebrew, you run applications, some basic stuff, one of them being OPL, otherwise known as Open PlayStation Loader, uh, that then allows you, if you have a hard drive in the back of the system, uh, you can get a network expansion uh, kit and hook a hard drive up to it, and then you can format it, add ISOs to it, and thanks to this thing, you can boot them up off the hard drive. Um, so I had that all set up, and it was pretty nice, and I had it for a bit. Uh, now, since this PS2 is so old, it was using IDE at the time. And uh, this is the network adapter right here that you need. As you can see, looks pretty standard. Some of you all might have had this. This is originally for stuff like, uh, I mean, not only to get online, but the hard drive functionality right here was mainly for Final Fantasy XI uh, because you need updates and such for it. But uh, you could just, again, hook up a hard drive to it, and you're pretty much good to go right there. However, uh, I'll show you the hard drive I had in here. This thing, I'm showing you this because I'm telling you all, don't buy this. This is straight garbage, I swear. Uh, it doesn't seem that bad at first, and Mac Store actually used to be pretty awesome. Uh, now they're horrible. Like, they're, they're new drives. Uh, they're faulty. I, I've had two of them, and uh, one of them right here, this is the one I'm holding. Uh, it's a 250 gigabyte drive, cost me 25 bucks on Amazon. I felt like, you know, that was pretty fair. Uh, the problem is, though... This has an issue where sometimes it is fine, but most of the time if you use, as soon as you go over half of the storage capability on this drive, it stops working. That's it. Um, the thing just bricks, and the only way to fix it is I got to format it, and I got to add games on there. So sometimes at about the halfway mark, it bricks. Sometimes you can get like 70% full, it bricks. Point is, I want to I wanna load a bunch of games onto my PS2. And then the thing is, I got this 250 gig drive and I can only use half of it. And that's already, you know, just not reliable at all. I don't want that. I also had one of these in my first ever TSOP flashed uh, Xbox. And the thing died after barely any use. So don't get these. I'll actually show you what I was using as well. Now, my favorite hard drive brand is this right here, Western Digital. And uh, I decided to get a few of these probably about a year ago for my other Xboxes. This one I haven't put in anything yet. And I just thought, you know, okay, I'll go to my closet and I'll slap one of these Western Digital drives in. Here's the problem though. Because of the spacing, I don't know how well you all can see this, but it just, it doesn't fit on this network adapter, unfortunately. It just does not work and it's really annoying. Um, so you can't use one of these Western Digital drives on the PS2 with the stock network adapter. And that's quite unfortunate because these things are actually pretty reliable. These ones I got on eBay. These ones are pretty reliable. I have one in, one or two of them in my Xboxes and they seem to work just fine. Uh, but those Mac Store ones, again, don't buy them. They're straight garbage. So I started looking into it a bit more, and honestly, I, I wanted to get something more than 250 gigs. Um, I could get, you know, I, you can find IDE drives for free in old computers and stuff, but those might be 80 gigs or 120 gigs or even like 60, uh, something smaller. If I want to pay for more, though, the problem is IDE had its limitations, not only with storage, but also with speed. Uh, and on top of that, um, if you get a bigger IDE drive, which is maybe pushing about 500 gigs, they get expensive because this technology is just so old. So I end up seeing, you know, especially if you want to get, you know, bigger drives, such as like a one terabyte drive, you're going to have to go SATA. And for PS2, there's a few options. What you could do is you could get some adapters, like some IDE to SATA adapters, and plug in a uh, 2.5 inch, 2.5 inch hard drive, like a laptop hard drive, pop it in, and you're good to go. Um, the thing is, I did. I don't like messing with adapters all that much. I'll be straight up. I really don't want to mess with adapters. Plus, the hard drive's gonna flop around in the PS2 if I move it around or whatever. Uh, so I was looking at other options, and I'd seen these before. But we're gonna be checking out this thing right here. This right here is, if you're guessing, it's just a off-brand network adapter. You're correct. But there's one big difference. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. Oh, and it did come with like this thing to protect it. But this thing is actually SATA. Uh, this has been a, um, this is obviously, you know, a third-party one by GameStar, not by Sony, and it uses SATA right there on the board as opposed to IDE. Uh, the nice thing is with SATA, 
SATA hard drives are everywhere. You're going to find them all over the place. Um, you're going to pay a lot less for storage. So, for example, you know, I paid uh, 25 bucks for this thing right here that is a 250 gigabyte drive. Brand new. You can still get it for that price. Um, I'll get the hard drive. I'll show you all the hard drive that I got right here. Now, I just end up buying this drive right here. This is a one terabyte Seagate. I don't like Seagate all that much, but you know what? It's a SATA 2. Some people might be saying, oh, SATA 2. Dude, this is going inside a play. Do you see what this go inside? This go inside of a PlayStation 2. SATA 2 is overkill for a PlayStation 2. But uh, this was a refurbished one terabyte hard drive for 40 bucks that I got off Amazon. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, as you can see right here, you can just take this, kind of plop it in like so. Yeah, if I can actually get it, let me see. I'm kind of looking at this off camera. There we go. All right, there we go. That's looking nicer. You just pop it on. We're gonna slide it into the PS2, screw it in. And we should be good to go at that point. So I'm just going to put this down the side. Uh, but I want to do a quick comparison right here between these two. So as you can see, we have the GameStar adapter, which is SATA. And we have this thing right here. Let me see if I can focus in a little bit. Hopefully we can. Okay, there we go. So they do a good job marrying it. Obviously, this one is a bit lighter of a black as opposed to this. Um, if you really want the Ethernet, not the Ethernet, if you really want the dial-up adapter, you have that on here. You're missing out on that on the GameStar one, so that's unfortunate if you, for some reason, want to use uh, dial-up or, you know, an old phone cable. Uh, these screws right here also seem to be plastic on the GameStar adapter as opposed to metal on the original Sony one. I'm sure if you really care, you could swap those around. This has a hole right here. This one doesn't. The hard drive logo, the HDD, seems to be about the same. And then any official branding, so Sony, the PlayStation logo, PlayStation 2, those have all been removed off here. Uh, if you look at the bottom, really about the same. Uh, this one seems to be thinner at the bottom and no sticker, of course. Top of them, both have the same PS2 style. Again, this one seems to be thinner, so you're going to save some space on there, which is nice. And uh, then let's go ahead and look at the backs right here. So as you can see, sticker right here has its own serial number. This is cute, it has its own serial number as well. This one's made in Japan, this one's made in China, of course. Uh, and this was 16 bucks, by the way. I got this for, um, no, 18, excuse me, 18 off AliExpress. Um, so really when it comes down to it, you know, I paid 18 for this adapter, had to, I could have paid double and gotten it in the US, but I just decided to pay, you know, half the price and uh, get off AliExpress and wait about a month or two. I don't remember how much it exactly was. Uh, but yeah, no, I ended up getting that, and then I paid 40 bucks for the hard drive, so for, you know, just under $60, I'm going to be able to uh, get a one terabyte drive working in my PS2, which is pretty nice, as I said, because, you know, even with this right here, so these things, I priced them out, if you find them locally, you can probably find them for five, ten bucks, let's say, you know, even if you buy online, like ten dollars for this, um, and then at that point, you know, you get a hard drive, my 250 gig hard drive that I picked up, that was $25, so... You know, for just under $40, you're going to have a decent IDE setup, but for about $20 more, you can go SATA and you're going to have a lot more storage. I'm going to have four times the storage at this point, and it's going to be more reliable. So with that, you know, if you really like the PS2, in my opinion, that's totally worth it. But yeah, that looks nice so far. Again, any type of official Sony branding has been removed off here. So I, I respect that they did not try and go after, they didn't try and marry, you know, the OEM design. By that, I mean, they didn't try and clone it is what I'm trying to say. Um, they branded it themselves. So it is third party. It's not a bootleg. <laughs> Anyways, what we're going to do on there, let's go ahead and I would slap this in right now. Um, I mean, I'll show you how it goes in anyways, just to make sure we get a proper fit. But let's go ahead just pop that in, turn the PS2 around, slide the hard drive in, goes in with pretty much no issue. Well, just have to make sure that we can actually connect out because it has to connect to the PlayStation console itself. There we go. I felt to connect. All right. Then let's go ahead and get this screwed in. It's actually recommended that you screw these in with a nickel or like a coin of some kind as opposed to a screwdriver. I say screw official instructions. We're going to screw this in with a little tiny screwdriver I have on my desk just because it's on my desk and it's convenient. It's more convenient than finding some change. So there we go. We have it all screwed in. As you can see, I'm going to kind of move it over just to show you all exactly how it looks right here. So as you can see, it is screwed in right here. Kind of showing you the details. It doesn't fit as flush, it seems like. 
I might be a little bit crooked, I'm not sure. But honestly, seems to be okay. Kind of knocked the mic down, so let me move that up a little bit. But either way, we should be good on this. Uh, I'll also, just in case anyone's interested, take this thing off, just so we also don't have a annoying yellow sticker on the back. Oh God, oh man, okay, so. That does not come off as gracefully as I hoped it would. Okay, we gotta, that's silly, you gotta remove from the other way for it to be proper, but either way, kinda take that off. Great, awesome. <laughs> All right, cool, so there we go. We have it off, I'll, I'll worry about cleaning it later, I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, and the ethernet port, oh, that's actually a see-through ethernet port, that aesthetically looks pretty cool. So just showing you all the ethernet port right there, all close up. Haven't seen that on a, well, I've, I've rarely seen that on devices. You can move it around a little bit, so it's not like it's the best design, but that looks neat. Okay, cool. So if you ever want to, you know, uh, hook up your PS2 to play online and or stream uh, games off of your network, uh, you can do that easily. So, neato. All right. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is I just want to show you all how this is going to look right here, but I'm going to now take all of this off, uh, hook up my PS2's hard drive uh, to my computer, add the ISOs, and we're going to add a few games on here and make sure this actually works. All right, so here we go. We have the uh, the PS2. All the games have been uh, loaded onto it. I just loaded six games so far, and uh, the nice thing is with this hard drive, it is much quieter, and it does not produce nearly as much heat, so you already gain that major advantage from going to SATA. Um, I'm just going to show you all how this works and everything. So we got everything plugged in, just going to turn on the PS2. Uh, I got it hooked up through RGB SCART uh, on the Frame Meister right here. So this isn't going to look the best because I'm not doing a direct capture. But as you can see, instead of getting the regular screen, I get uh, the free McBoot browser right here. So I'm going to go to open PS2 loader. That's me. Hey, what's up? Wait for this to pop up. Goes in and out a few times because that's what Frame Meister does. If you're hearing some really annoying buzzing, that's uh, my 3D printer. <laughs> but uh, as you can see, these are all the games right here. So uh, I just loaded up a few games, you know, the necessary stuff you need. Uh, let's go ahead and load up my all-time favorite game, Grand Theft Auto 3. So you just hit X right there. Wait for that. Oh. There we go. Oh. Eh, it's not going to be the best there. Man, it has been ages since I played this on a PS2. This is crazy. Yeah, there you go. Let's see how uh, fast we can get into the game itself. Alright. Wow! Okay, I've never played this game off a PS2, hard, like a hard drive on the PS2. That loads so much faster. Alright, there's the cutscene. Go ahead and skip out. There we go, we're in game already. I know a place on the edge of the red light district where we can lay low, but my hands are all messed up, so you better drive, brother. And again, loading this up right here. No disc in the drive. So we're good to go. And we can just go ahead and turn this thing off. So as you can see, it's working just fine. Now I'm gonna move this back into my uh, office so we can actually talk and you won't hear all the stuff in the background. Again, so we have this all right here. For details of the hard drive, I also used uh, a program called WinHip, that is Win, W-I-N-H-I-I-P, to uh, install all the games over to it. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. And then I formatted the drive using a 48-bit HD loader. Um, so all that's easy enough to do, and then you just copy-paste all the ISOs on there, and it transfers them, and it was transferring them at like 130 megabits per second, not megabytes, megabits. Um, so, you know, fast enough. I mean, it was transferring my games within 30 to 40 seconds or so each. Um, one thing I did, I definitely want to tell you all, um, because this seems perfect, and honestly, this is the only thing that might hinder some people if you're thinking of going to the upgrade. Uh, I'm going to, again, zoom in on this right here. There we go. There we go. Uh, this, I actually found out, some people might have noticed this, but I didn't notice this until I actually took this whole device off and this popped off. This thing, essentially, there we go. This thing pops off, and uh, this is just a dummy switch. It's just there for design, so... If you're thinking you're going to get, you know, a native SATA interface and you're also going to be able to, you know, use your network on here, you won't be able to. So for some people that might be saying, oh, well, what's the point in having the original network adapter if I can get this? If you ever want to use this as a true network adapter, either to play online or to load ISOs off your network, 
you cannot do it with this. So at this moment in time, unfortunately, you're not able to do that unless you get one of these that has a, you know, that actually has a jack on there. Uh, this one does not. So that is why the original network adapter would still be good to have in case you ever want to do that. As you can see, it has both jacks right there. Uh, the only downside is it is only IDE. So what you would have to do is you'd have to get a IDE hard drive that is compatible, or you could get one of those uh, SATA to, well, IDE to SATA converters that you could put in here. But then you'd also be limited on space since you have the converter, so you would have to be limited to a two and a half inch laptop drive as opposed to a full three and a half inch hard drive like what I have in the PS2 right now. So really this is up to you. Uh, if you do ever want to use the network connectivity, you might want to just stick to the official Sony one. However, if you're like me, you don't really care for the network connectivity or you at least don't care about it right now, uh, this thing is great. Uh, you know, it's just a native SATA interface. You could use the full three and a half inch hard drive, pop it in, it's ready to go, and again, the big benefit uh, with uh, SATA over IDE, uh, better compatibility. My drive is also much quieter. It's much. It doesn't generate nearly as much heat. Uh, it's easier to use and all that stuff. So uh, I, I get you know all the benefits of SATA on here, which is pretty nice. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would very much be appreciated. And if you absolutely hated it, you want to stick to IDE, a dislike is fine as well too. Just drink some more, try to numb the pain, yeah, baby, I just need that.